This is the last VA News for 2014, and we've got a full slate of stories to share with you. First, all the Veterans Day events from which we could get video and images. These disabled veterans were the first graduates of the Warriors to Work program at the VA Acquisition Academy. Three veterans tell us what the 2014 Creative Arts Festival meant to them. And we salute a great hero 151 years after he died at the age of 22 on the field in Gettysburg. Hello, I'm Roger Lockhart with the Office of Information and Technology. And I'm Carmen Cordoba with the Office of Administration. This is VA News. At VA, we like to say that every day is Veterans Day, but there is only one 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month each year. And as we know, that's when the bells rang out at Versailles to signal the signing of the armistice to end the First World War. And that's when we now herald the living veterans of service in the U.S. military. At Arlington National Cemetery, Secretary McDonald presided over his first Veterans Day and watched as Vice President Biden placed a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and later introduced him to the Patriots filling the cemetery's amphitheater. I am deeply honored, both professionally and personally, to present to you a great advocate for our veterans, the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Our cameras were at the ceremony for the greatest generation, where veterans, mostly over the age of 90, came to see the memorial to their pain and sacrifice in defense of freedom and liberty. Just nice to be, and just nice for people to come out and, and serve with them. I just feel good, it's just a good feeling. We were at the Vietnam Wall for the ceremony of living veterans of the conflicts in the 1960s and 70s, paying tribute to more than 58,000 who did not come home. On Veterans Day and every day, let's celebrate our troops, our veterans, their families, by telling their stories. Stories that inspire us all, generation after generation after generation, so that others can understand what these men and women have done for our country. Secretary McDonald kept a hectic, deliberate pace attending events and mixing with veterans before and after Veterans Day. He went to Reagan National to thank World War II veterans from Missouri for coming to see their memorial on an honor flight. He was at Walter Reed to greet Team Red, White and Blue at the end of the cross-country flag delivery. He was on CBS's 60 Minutes and delivered a pre-Veterans Day message to kick off a major VA reorganization. There's more on these stories and coverage of Veterans Day in Washington and across the nation on VA social media sites seen here, including YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Flickr, and the Vantage Point blog. On November 6th, VA's Acquisition Academy in Frederick, Maryland graduated its first class from the school's Warriors to Workforce program. With diplomas in hand, 26 wounded warriors proudly crossed the stage to end the three-year program and begin a new life after shaking the hand of VA Deputy Secretary Sloan Gibson. Two graduates told us how excited they are to start the next chapter of their careers. I'm excited. I um, cannot wait. Uh, I work at the Lebanon VA Medical Center. It's been exciting. I've done two rotations there before and I've learned a lot. I'm excited to become a full-time member of the team there and contribute full-time and, and just work. When I came into the program, I was a mother, single mother of four, high school dropout, had a GED, no college, so I've achieved, I've got my bachelor's degree in business, um, done way, I've way far exceeded what I expected when I came to the academy. They bring to the table a lot of great skills that they've learned in the, in the military, leadership, teamwork, integrity, discipline, and we want to build onto that with the technical skills. And so that is what we're finding as we transition them through the program, that we're just taking those raw skills that they've got and adding the technical piece in contracting. And so we see that growth in them, and they tap back into everything they've learned in the military, all those great skills. And so what we've got coming out at the end of the program is really a well-rounded 
technical business advisor that will be working in the VA. A lot maybe saw themselves blue collar, now they're wearing suits. And just seeing that transformation from the initial entry three years ago, you know, they were military or, you know, never saw themselves in suits. And today I look at them and they look like Wall Street businessmen and, you know, and women. And that's very, very cool. So I think this program is such a success in doing that transformation. And that first year, that transition helps them to see themselves in a new light, build that confidence and competence because then in year two and three, we bring the technical piece and that professional development to a higher level. This is the first of three active cohorts with a fourth starting in February 2015. The veterans in the inaugural Warriors to Workforce internship were joined in year two by five veterans who already met the positive education requirement for a federal contract specialist, bringing the number of veterans in the cohort to 26. Among those, seven have Purple Hearts, two have Bronze Stars, and they total 190 years of military experience. They represent 10 states and three branches of service. Almost lost in the buildup and excitement of Veterans Day was this year's National Veterans Creative Arts Festival at the historic Milwaukee VA Medical Center. Well, if you know anything, you know we would not let a chance get by to report on this wonderful event, especially when our friend and Milwaukee VA videographer, Rich Daisy, goes out of his way to make this nice report. Rehearsals are a lot of fun. You can learn a lot in music theory here and speech. And, you know, it's just more, it's like a, it's like a seminar sometimes, you know. I'm in a long seminar, you know, we're up from 8 o'clock to sometime 9 o'clock p.m., but it's definitely worth it. It's worth putting together a wonderful stage show. Teachers, the old and the young live to, to see what it takes to put a show like this together. I mean, from the technicians to the to the teachers, and I always love what I've learned through some of the um, the directors, uh, some of the the guys, men and ladies, you know, who help with the chorus and the techniques of keeping your mouth open and little things you can take with you beyond here. You're around people that you can relate to and, and that's another good thing about it. You're meeting guys and you know you can only talk to some, or some subject you can only relate to two veterans. You know veterans benefits and things we went through you know any problems they may have but yeah, a lot of really nice veterans, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine guys, and it's all a melting pot in here. I am a Navy vet. I live in a suburb of Minneapolis called Shakopee. There is nothing in the world that will empty your mind and give you a, a purpose and a, and a meaning to your life. Uh, like I said, this took three to four thousand hours of concentration and relief from all any problems I might I might be experiencing and uh, I highly recommend it uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate in this and uh, I I don't know what I would have done the last few years if I hadn't had this to to occupy me you can walk through the garden that's so I started tap dancing when I was about 65 years of age. I'm, my next birthday I'll be turning 80, but I love doing it. This is my eighth festival. My piece that I'm doing here is called G.I. Jive. Uh, it's a fast tap. It's pretty fast but I'm enjoying it. But the, the best honor is, to me, is being chosen to be able to perform my talent. That's the best honor. You can't get any better than that. Throughout our nation's history, faithful remembrance and tribute to duty, honor, and country have reinfused our patriotic spirit. Selfless sacrifice should never be forgotten.
That's the message behind the latest award of the Medal of Honor to Union Army Lieutenant Alonzo Cushing, seen here on the Gettysburg Cyclorama, mortally wounded on one of the cannons that thwarted Pickett's charge. President Obama said Cushing's deeds and all others before and after should be honored long after they leave the battlefield, for decades, even centuries to come. Here are President Obama's words about Cushing's last day when he was only 22 and had already fought bravely at Bull Run, Antietam, Chancellorville, and Fredericksburg. Lon was hit and badly wounded. His first sergeant, a soldier by the name of Frederick Fugger, urged him to go to the rear. But Lon refused and said he'd fight it out or die in the attempt. Bleeding, and weak, he moved his remaining guns closer to the front. Over 10,000 Confederate infantrymen advanced, elbow to elbow, in rows over an, a mile wide. Peering through field glasses, Lon ordered his men to continue firing at the advancing columns. He used his own thumb to stop his gun's vent, burning his fingers to the bone. When he was hit the final time, as a poet later wrote, his guns spoke out for him once more before he fell to the ground. And Alonzo Cushing was just 22 years old. Today, awareness of the need to protect our personal identity information is at an all-time high. The same is true for how we at VA treat veterans' personal data with every interaction. One of the priorities of the Office of Information and Technology is to establish policies and monitor systems to do just that. And Chief Information Officer Steph Warren says VA employees play a key role as well. The majority of incidents where we've put veterans' information at risk is when somebody has taken information out of an electronic system, they've printed it on something, and then they've walked out of the facility and lost control. Even in the facility, they've lost control in a, a public restroom. The other areas we have see process breakdowns where uh, letters get stuck together or the wrong information gets sent to the wrong veteran. So a, a lot of what a VA employee needs to do is to be very mindful of what they're doing, to be very aware of the information they have, to be cognizant of once they take that information out of a controlled setting, if they don't maintain control of it, they're putting our veterans at risk. When the veteran comes in, when a veteran comes in for care, or when they're receiving a benefit, if they're dealing with identity theft, you're not able to enjoy the benefits that you've earned. So we, we've got to make sure that the information that's been given us in trust, we make sure we protect it and we make sure it's not something we put at risk unnecessarily. We have a very strong defense in depth uh, strategy. We have a lot of tools and technologies that allow us to make sure not only are we looking at primary flows of information, but the back the backup areas. So we're always looking, we're always scanning, we're always searching because we want to make sure if something untoward is happening or something that's outside of the normal boundaries, we're aware of it and we go look at it. It could be somebody uh, hitting a wrong key or going in a wrong place. Or it could be something as nefarious as somebody trying to get into the VA and get a hold of veterans information. Did you know the VA's Office of Information and Technology's annual IT Customer Satisfaction Survey is in full swing and now is your chance to take the survey. Charlie Warner from IT's Customer Satisfaction Improvement Group told us that your feedback and perceptions are essential to improving ongoing IT products and customer service. You'll get an email inviting you to take the survey. Um, from either the IT customer satisfaction email box or from your facility CIO or both. You'll click on the link and take that survey in no more than 10 to 15 minutes. We really do use the results to make real improvements. And so we very much value your feedback and encourage you to please take that survey. Thank you. That's all we have for this show and for VA News in 2014. The VA News crew will take the rest of the year to reload and reformat for next year. We're not at all sure what that means exactly, but you will know as soon as we do. I'm Roger Lockhart. And I'm Carmen Cordova. Hope to see you soon on an all-new VA News. Happy holidays, everyone. Mm -hmm.